Hey guys, thanks for watching. This video is going to serve as the documentation for the 2022 zombie update. In this video, I'm going to be going over how to set up the zombie randomization on new character controllers, uh, AI, blueprints, uh, whatever, and also on how to set up the morph pose animations as well. This process has been completely overhauled and streamlined and is much simpler than it was before. So I'm just going to get stuck into it and show you guys how quickly you can set this up with any of your own custom blueprints or AI. So if we go into the master blueprints folder, we'll have the components in here, outfit control, morph control, we'll be using these later. And by default, all of these zombies are inheriting from this master class. So if we open this up, we can see there are three skeletal mesh components, a morph control component, and a little bit of construction script code. It's good to use this as a reference. Now, in my example, I'm going to be making a new blueprint class and we're going to be making it a character class and we're going to be calling it zombie custom. But this process is going to be exactly the same uh, no matter what you're using. If you're using uh, AI from the Smart AI pack, for example, or anything else like that, the process is going to be the same. So inside of our custom zombie, we want to go in and we want to add the same component setup. So we had three skeletal meshes and ideally we want to name them the same thing they don't have to be called the same thing but it'll just speed up the setup process if they are so we've got these three components and we want them to be children and we'll save that for now so we go back we've got these three components there's the morph control we'll come back to this at the end next we want to copy this construction script code to the construction script in our custom zombie so this code is really optional, but I recommend it. It's a nice quality of life thing. Uh, when you drag the zombie into the level, it will automatically populate one time. So it's not gonna populate every time, just the first time when the mesh doesn't have anything assigned. So as you can see here, all it's doing is checking itself for the outfit control. And if that's valid, it's randomizing the zombie. We'll compile and save this. We'll go back, nothing's happening yet. And that's fine, that's exactly what we're expecting. So, this is now our parent blueprint. We wanna create a child. We're gonna call this zombie male two custom. And we're gonna open him up. So if we have a look at this child zombie inside the level, we can see that the only difference is that it has the outfit control component added to it. So we don't want to add it to the parent, we want to add it to the child. And we're going to add outfit control zombie male or two. If we look over here, we can see this is already pre-configured with the presets and it has everything we need to get our zombie spawning. Now unfortunately, it's still not going to work. We can drag him into the level, he exists, but there's no zombie there yet. So to get this to work, we just need to go back, open up the outfit control parent class, and inside the event graph, you'll see this red comment box. You'll also see that it's casting to the zombie AI master, which is the example blueprint that we've been referencing when we're creating our custom zombie. All we need to do is cast to the custom zombie instead. We can get rid of these, reconnect them up, pop him over here. And now there's four components coming off there and one from here. So we just want to copy this here. So this is setting just a reference to the parent. So we want to promote this to a variable. And we want to call this, we're just going to call it the same thing. So we can delete this, pop him there, and then reconnect that back up. Now this is only referenced in one other place, so we can come over here and fix that as well. And that's right here. Next, we wanna get these four connections as well. So if we come over, we can see that all this one is doing is referencing the mesh and the other skeletal mesh components. So we can hook these up.
get the top and get the hair. Drag these connections over. And after doing that, we have now successfully modified the cast. And this is gonna work for all of the child blueprints that we make from here on out. So we don't need to do this again. This is gonna work for the first female, the second female, uh, and the two other males as well. Uh, so it's, it's much, much faster. You're not setting up each zombie. Uh, this, this, this is it now, really. So the only other thing we need to change here as well is there is an editor event for the randomize all zombies and we want to make sure that instead of referencing the AI master that it's referencing the custom zombie that we've just set up and we don't need to reference the child we want to reference the parent class here so we can compile one last thing we make a new for each loop quickly set this up And there we have it. If we go back to our mail and look in the viewport, we'll see that we now have, sorry, that was the wrong one. We go back to our custom mail, we'll see that we now have the zombie set up, but he's not quite in the right place. So we wanna go back to the custom, set this to negative 90, set the rotation to negative 90, and then we also wanna set the animation asset, sorry, the animation blueprint to third person, or whatever you're using in your map. And now, when we go back to our child zombie, he's already set up. So if we go inside the map now, we select our custom zombie, we can now randomize him as we please. And if we randomize all, it's not gonna affect those zombies anymore because we've updated it to only work with this class. We can, oh, we can make more copies and right away we can randomize all of these guys as well. So that's all it takes to set up the randomization but the really really cool thing now is we've got this custom zombie. Say we want to make the female and this is going to be the exact same way you'll be doing it when you're working with any of the other character assets. This is going to be the best practice. Oh geez. We'll call this female O2. I stuffed the name up because I'm talking, but that's okay. So all we need to do in this one is reference the female. Hit compile, we have already got our female. So now we drag the female in, wrong one. Now we drag the female in and we can randomize her. And when we hit randomize all, because she's, she's inherited from the same parent class, she's also gonna be randomized. And the great thing here now is if you have any custom code that you want to only apply to the female or only apply to the male, you can now go in here and extend it. And it's completely non-destructive, very easy to modify, much easier to work with. So the final step now is getting the morph control animations to work. So there's this morph control component here. And if we go in here, we can see at the start, it's checking the AI master to see if it's alive and if it is, it's allowing the facial animations to play. So we want to go back to our custom zombie and we want to give it a boolean and we we'll just call it alive. You can have any sort of check or logic check that you want here, um, but it's just something in place. So when the zombie dies, the face stops moving. We want to add that boolean in and then we want to update this cast. So instead of casting to the example blueprint, we want to cast to the custom zombie. We can simply drag that across drag this one across and then we want to get the boolean that we just created get rid of that one and then last but not least we want to reference and replace that. So now when we go back to our parent zombie class, we just need to add in the morph control component. And in here you can see that there's a few different settings, eye speed, mouth speed, 
enable disable make sure that we set a life to true hit compile and now when we go inside of our level I'll delete the nav mesh so we can see when we simulate the faces will be an animated and this is going to work for all four zombies the process is exactly the same every single time and these error messages that come up at the end this only happens because we've changed the reference and changed the cast so these old zombies are no longer going to be functional and that's completely fine if we delete those run it again no errors everything's running exactly as it should it's uh, it's, a, it's a lot easier it's a lot quicker mm, the video is probably about the same length if I'm honest um, but it's 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 much easier to get it right and um, you don't need to be creating variables or doing all this other crazy stuff uh, like you were with the previous edition so I think this is a much needed update I think it's it's great quality of life improvement especially with the seed based randomization um, so I, I hope you guys enjoy it I hope it makes working with them a lot easier and thank you for the support